Hello there. In this lesson, we're going to learn about amines and amides. And so I have a couple examples uh, for amines. I have this serotonin. Uh, serotonin is a neurotransmitter that allows uh, some nerve cells to talk to each other. Um, and so you can see these nitrogen groups on the structure of this molecule. That's what makes it an amine. And then for my amide, I chose acetaminophen, which is um, a pain relieving drug that uh, is found in things like Tylenol. And uh, what you notice is that you get the nitrogen group, but also carbonyl right next to each other. And so that's called an amide. All right, let's learn more. Ooh, fancy. All right, so amines are molecules that look like they could have come from ammonia. So there's ammonia, it's got NH3. Now, if you stick that ammonia onto anything else, then what you have is a primary amine, right? So R, remember, that means the rest of the molecule. So if you see an N, the two H's sticking off, that's a primary amine. Now, if the nitrogen is between two other carbons, two other parts of the molecule, that's a secondary amine. If it's between three other carbons, three other parts of the molecule, that's a tertiary amine. And nitrogen can even get a charge and make like a coordinate bond and have it between four other components, making it a quaternary amine. Um, so there you go, lots of options for amines. Okay, so a few interesting amines that uh, you could keep in the back of your head when you're thinking of some examples are the ones that are involved in your brain uh, to keep your mood balanced. Uh, things like dopamine, there's an amine there. Uh, norepinephrine, there's an amine there. Serotonin, you saw that one already. Uh, it's got two amines. And so it's kind of neat how all of these have uh, amine components on them. Uh, a couple other ones that I think are kind of cool, uh, have, well, the names are pretty funny, is uh, the molecules that are related to rotting tissue. So rotting animal flesh. Um, so obviously somewhere in our evolutionary history, uh, that molecule had to get associated with something super negative. And, uh, and so putrescine is an amine that uh, comes off like rotting fish and uh, cadaverine, uh, obviously named because it's a molecule that's found coming off of, uh, you know, rotting cadavers, bodies. Uh, so there you go, some interesting amines in the world around you. I think one of my kids must have got a hold of this slideshow and put all these transitions in. This is not me. Anyways, um, naming amines. So pretty easy. You just uh, use the suffix amine uh, and a number to show where it is on the chain, right? So we've got one, two, three carbons here. So this is going to be prop amine. Uh, and this would be one, two, three, four carbons. So this would be two uh, but amine or but two amine. I think either is fine. And then we got three carbons here. So this again, oh, we got a um, uh, amine on carbons one and three. So this is going to be a prop uh, one, three uh, diamine. There you go. How about that for a snowstorm? Okay, so um, with the secondary amines where you have more than uh, one carbon being attached to the nitrogen, uh, what you're gonna do is uh, like identify the longest chain. And so that's gonna be your amine. And then this section over here is the secondary part that you're going to list. Uh, so it works. Uh, so this is a prop amine again. And then off of the nitrogen, so you say N ethyl, because there is an ethyl group here off of the nitrogen. So instead of a number, you use the letter N. And so this is a tertiary amine. And so the longest one here is one, two, three. Uh, so again, it's a propamine. Uh, so this is propamine. And this is going to be N ethyl for this guy and then an 
methyl for this guy. And so you get all the components there. Uh, list them in alphabetical, right? E before M. Alrighty, in order to make uh, amines, you're going to use uh, alkyl halides and your nitrogen com compounds uh, like ammonia or another amine. Uh, so here's an alkyl halide. Uh, there's the alkyl part, there's the halide part. And what you're going to do is uh, substitute the nitrogen for where the halogen is. Uh, so you're going to end up with CH3, CH2, uh, CH2, and then where the chlorine was, you're going to put the NH2. And so that'll leave you uh, the H, one of the H's, and the chlorine left over. Uh, with the line angle formulas here, you can see you have the other alkyl halide. There's the halogen. Um, take our uh, primary amine from the first reaction, uh, and we'll make a secondary amine. So you'll end up with ding, ding, ding to the nitrogen, and then ding, ding, ding and you'll end up with the HCl left over again. Uh, this nitrogen will also have a uh, hydrogen on it. And so, right, uh, we went from a primary amine there to a secondary amine here, and you could keep going tertiary if you wanted to. Alrighty, so amides are formed in a very similar way to the way we made esters. So with an ester, it was a carboxylic acid and an alcohol and you did the condensation reaction, remove the water, and you ended up with the ester, uh, O to CH2 uh, to CH3, and some water, right? Uh, with amide, it's pretty much the same thing. It's just using an amine and a carboxylic acid, right? So you're gonna take out, again, the water, and you'll end up with a similar type bond. So I end up with CH3, C double bond O. This time it's to an N, uh, NH, uh, to CH2 and CH3, and water remains. So there you go, very similar. Um, so this is an ester, and this is an amide linkage. Alrighty, so let's have a look at these uh, common substances that are amides and see if we can pick out the amide linkages throughout them. So first off, penicillin. So if you look through the penicillin um, molecule here, you see there's an amide, there's an amide. Pretty cool, right? There's LSD, amide. Uh, all of our uh, proteins, you can look in here, you can see there's an amide. Every one of your proteins is going to be held together by a like, repeating pattern of, of amide linkages over and over and over again. Um, a couple of other uh, synthetic fibers, like nylon, uh, has amide linkages throughout it. Um, Kevlar, uh, so you know, bulletproof vests, uh, you've got amides through it there. So yeah, lots of uh, cool substances have amides throughout them, including you. All right, naming amides is very similar to naming uh, the esters. Uh, instead of O8 at the end, you're gonna put amide, which is convenient. Uh, so we got one, two, three carbons here. So this is gonna be propanamide. And here we got uh, one, two, three, four. So this is carbon number two. So you're gonna have two bromo, um, Butanamide. So you're always going to start counting number one uh, on that carbonyl carbon. Uh, secondary tertiary amines use the N uh, to denote other components, right? So the side with the carbonyl group uh, is always going to be like your parent or the, um, the the thing that's going to go at the end of the name. So this is one, two, three, four. So we got uh, butanamide again. Butanamide. And then you can say that off of the N here, you've got an ethyl group. So N ethyl butanamide. Uh, this one is a one, two, three. This is a propanamide. Propanamide. And then off of the nitrogen here, we've got two methyl groups. So it'd be N and 
dimethylpropanamide. There you go. It's pretty straightforward. It's a little practice, you'll get it. All right, so as far as properties go, uh, amines are very similar to alcohols because nitrogen is very electronegative, a lot like oxygen is. And so what you end up with is hydrogen bonding uh, between molecules uh, because of the strong dipole uh, between the hydrogen and the nitrogen. And then if you go from, this would be a primary amine, if you go to a secondary amine, you only get one uh, hydrogen bond there, so it's not as polar. And then a tertiary amine is less polar again because you don't have any hydrogen. So they decrease in polarity as you go along. Um, so then what happens is if you're looking at uh, your amides, uh, they sort of have, follow a similar pattern. Uh, they're going to be very similar to carboxylic acids because they also have this carbonyl group, and so they're very polar. Uh, and you've got these nice, strong hydrogen bonds um, where the hydrogens are attached to the nitrogen. And then again, if you make it a secondary amide, uh, you get this other R group there, which means less hydrogen bonding, which means a little less polar. And then if it's a tertiary amide, uh, you've got two R groups on there, less polar again, uh, so it follows the same pattern of decreasing polarity.